Hi, Mrs. Spone here, and today we're going to look at stopping distance and reaction time. And I kind of call this texting and driving, or the physics of paying attention when you're driving. Scenario, imagine you're traveling in a car at 68 miles an hour, and you look away for one second to change the radio station, check a text message, look at the pretty trees, you know, see what the GPS is doing, charge your phone, plug it in. Why is it a bad idea to do this? The simple answer is obviously you can crash and die or kill someone, but we're going to break this down a little more scientifically and look at three separate variables that are involved with stopping a car. And the physics of the situation is we're going to look at the distance you actually travel in that second. We're going to look at the total overall human reaction and action time and something called braking distance, which might be alarming for some of you. Um, if you were to take 68 miles an hour and do some unit conversions or dimensional analysis, miles cancel, hours cancel, and so forth, minutes cancel, and we're left with feet per second. You were to do all the math, 68 miles an hour is 100 feet per second. So if you look away for one second or you do anything of that nature, your car is actually going to travel 100 feet during that duration. And it's really important to kind of visualize how far that actually is. When I'm with my students at the school, we actually go in the hallway and we measure that out. And it is a surprisingly large distance to realize that when you look away, that's how far you're going. In addition to that, we have something called human reaction time. And when you see a car in front of you slam on the brakes, you kind of look up and you have to recognize the danger. You have to realize what's going on. Your brain's a computer. It takes time to process that information. And you got to decide what you want to do. Do I want to swerve off the road, slam on the brakes, close my eyes and cry? <laughs> I don't know. Or, And then on top of that, if you decide to push the brake pedal, your brain got to send a signal down to your foot. You're going to take your foot off the gas and you're going to put it on a brake pedal and you're going to slam it down. And then that fluid's going to go, probably a hydraulic braking system to essentially stop your car. All of this takes a little bit of time. And if you kind of think that all of this takes about a second, um, you're going to end up traveling about 100 more feet. And there is a way to measure human reaction time. If you were to take a ruler and have someone hold it, and essentially you were to put your hand right here, and th when they drop it, you you're supposed to clamp down. And you look at this distance that it falls, since we know the acceleration of gravity, you can actually measure your reaction time. There's websites that do it too based upon clicking. And you would actually use this formula to do it, plugging in the variables. But uh, I kind of put a chart up here. If any of you have a ruler at home and you want to try this, you can actually measure your action time and get a quicker result than doing some math. Um, and the last thing we want to look at is braking distance. It's important to note that the stopping distance of a vehicle is proportional to its kinetic energy. And kinetic energy is one half mv squared. The stopping distance of any car is going to be dependent upon its velocity squared. And what that means is that's actually huge. If you're going 20 miles an hour and you double your speed to 40 miles an hour, what happens to your stopping distance? Well, your stopping distance is, your braking distance is denoted in red. At 20 miles an hour, it's 6 meters. At 40 miles an hour, it's not twice as much. It's not 12 meters. It's actually 24 meters. It's actually four times as great. It's a square. If your speed goes, if your velocity doubles, your braking distance goes up by four times as much. Likewise, if you were to triple your speed from 20 to 60, braking distance is 60, or braking distance is six meters. If it was just tripling, it would be 18 meters. But what does it do? It goes up to 55 meters. So you're traveling three times as fast, your braking distance is nine times as much. Nine times six is 54. Likewise, if you were to go from 20 to 80, and 80 is not even on a scale, what's going to happen to your braking distance? You're increasing your speed four times as much. So it's gonna, your braking distance is going to increase by 16 times, or 16 times six which is going to be a huge 
distance. So 6 times 10 is 60. It's going to equal 96 meters. So that's going to be a very, very large result. It's going up a lot. And... I guess the gist is it takes nearly twice as far to stop at 70 miles an hour as it does to stop at 50. And if you kind of realize this, traveling at 35 miles an hour, your braking distance is like 45 feet. I mean, if you're traveling at 30 miles an hour and you slam on the brakes, it takes your car 45 feet before it comes to a complete stop. That's what braking distance is. Braking distances in themselves are a little nerve wracking if you're traveling 60 miles an hour. After you slam on the brakes, after you think about all this and you have all this thinking time, after you slam on the brakes, your car is still going to go 55 more meters and every meter is going to be a little over 3 feet. So you're looking at like 180 feet or so. So that's going to be a long distance, a very long stopping distance. The only saving grace here is if you're dealing with a car in front of you and they slam on their brakes, you they always obviously have to undergo this distance as well. But uh, if a child's running in the road then that's not a saving grace anymore. So just some basic ideas. Braking distance at 68 miles an hour, it's about 250 feet. This assumes roads are dry, your tires are in optimal shape, your brakes are good, and so on. So your stopping distance at 68 miles an hour comes out to be about 100 feet if you look away for a second. About another 100 feet for thinking, reacting, pushing the pedal. And braking distance is surprisingly about 250 feet, so you actually travel 450 feet around this area before your vehicle will actually come to a stop. And that's a huge amount of distance on a highway. It gives you a little perspective on looking away or not paying as much attention as you should, or driving a little tired, or possibly on something, substance you should not be on. And if we were to just kind of break this down to city driving... At 35 miles an hour, if you looked away for a second to check a text or to do whatever you're doing, you will actually travel 50 feet in that second, 50 feet while thinking and reacting, and your braking distance will be about 60 feet. It'll take you about 160 total feet to stop. So braking distance alone is kind of nerve-wracking. Like if a child runs in your road and you slam on the brakes, your car is not going to stop on a dime. The faster you're going, the more your braking distance is going to increase. And it's not linear. It's proportional to the square of your velocity. So it's important to be conscious and drive safely and to maintain speed limits in residential areas and on the highway. But hopefully you see there's more going on to stopping than just slamming on your brakes and stopping your vehicle. There's reaction time, there's perception time, there's action time. Your brakes actually take time to stop your car and you can go hundreds of feet in that process regardless of whether you're on the highway or in the city so hopefully this helps you i know some of us are going to be getting our permits soon and driving hopefully you kind of use this to your benefit and drive safely uh this is mrs zapone i'm out